All right, so as we discussed, the logarithm is the inverse to an exponent. So what we can do is, is technically, we can say that the log to the base 2 is actually cancelling out this 2 to the power of 5 here. I'm going to show you the long way, all right, and how it actually works mathematically. Now, if whatever I do to the left-hand side, I have to do to the right-hand side. So if I'm taking the log to the base 2 of the left-hand side, then we're going to take the same to the right-hand side, log to the base 2 of 32. Now, we said, didn't we, what did we say? That didn't we say that log to the base 2 of 32 is equal to what? What did we discuss? Is equal to 5. In other words, what we're saying is 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. You're following me so far? Then what about over here? If I was to write this as a logarithm, log to the base of 10 to 1,000 is equal to? 3. Three. Log to the base of 5 of 625 is equal to? 4. And log this one over here, log to the base 2 of 1024 is equal to 10. Now, I hope you're following me. In other words, if I can say that x squared is equal to, I don't know, 64, then, you know, I guess what we're doing is we're, we're, we actually can use equations or the inverse to find what x is. Now, you could just trial and error and tell me that x squared is equal to 64. What's x? 8. Well, it's not always that easy. We're not always dealing with nice, round, perfect squares and things like that. Sometimes we're dealing with fractional indices and things like that. So it's not so, so clear cut. <clears throat> so... So far, I hope that if you're asked to rewrite as a logarithm, it should make sense. And remember, you can always check because 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. Let's do some more examples just to get you started. Now, let's write this as an index, please. Okay, so you can see there that I'm going to get you to have a go at it. I'm going to pause the video now for a couple of seconds or maybe I'm going to pause it for two minutes. Okay, so let's stop there. Have a go at these questions, please. <clears throat> All right, so what you should have got for writing as an inverse now or as an index. Now, just quickly, uh, what I would like to say is, you know how I said the logarithm is the inverse of an exponential? Well, an exponential is an inverse of a logarithm. So let's, I'm going to show you the, ma the correct mathematics is how, how this actually works out. Given that the fact that I've got log to the base 10 here, let's do 10 to the power of on both sides. Shh. Let's do that. 10 to the power of log 10 to 1,000. And if I've done that to the left-hand side, let's do the same thing to the right-hand side. 10 to the power of 3. Now what happens is this 10 to the log 10... The, the exponent and the logarithm are inverse. They cancel each other out. What am I left with on the left-hand side? A thousand. a thousand equals 10 to the power of 3. That's how it works out. All right? And that's why we have logarithms. to Because they are inverse to the ex exponential. What's that? Okay. No, but no, you don't. Okay, but I'm just showing you that if you ever completely lost your way, a lot of the time students just wrote learn rules and things, but if you do know the fact that the inverse of a logarithm is an exponential and vice versa, then you could do what I've just done here. And it helps to have that knowledge rather than just such a, um, I guess, basic knowledge. Let's do the same thing. What's the inverse of log to the base 2? 2 to the power of log 2 and I'm going to leave that like so and on the right hand side I'm going to do 2 to the power of minus 2. Now they're going to cancel each other out which means that what we're saying is 2 to the power of minus 2 is equal 1 quarter. Okay. Now 
a lot of you sort of, and that's your negative indices, think about it, 2 to the power of minus 2 using your negative indices, 2 to the power of minus 2 is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 2 being 4 is equal to 1 over 4. Or we could say that's the same as 1 half times 1 half being a quarter. Okay, now I'm going to pull. All right, so what we're sort of thinking about here, we don't have to think about it too much, but 2 to the power of something equals 2, so that that something is 1. So log to the base of 2 to the 2 is equal to 1. What do you notice then? Well, this is actually one of your laws. If I've got log to the base anything of, so log to the base A of A is equal to 1. That's, I guess, one of those things that you should notice. Also, similarly, log to the base anything of 1 is equal to 0. In other words, anything to the power of 0, A to the power of 0 is equal to 1. B to the power of 0 is equal to 1. 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So that's one of those laws that are just, just, just letting you know that for the time being. Something, 3 to the power of something equals 81. That something is 4. Okay? And 3 to the power of something is 1 on 27. Well, let's do... Maybe what we could say is 1 on 27 is... What about 3 to the power of negative 3? Isn't that equal to 1 over the power of 3? Oh, sorry. Isn't that 1 over 3 to the power of 3? Yeah? So, so 3 to the power of something equals 1 on 27. So therefore, what, if, what, if I evaluate this, what does that equal? What's my power? Negative 3. Okay, so tr that's a tricky one, isn't it? Well, you're going you're gonna to practice it now. So what I'm going to do is... Let's just, let's just give you an example of why logarithms exist. We've got these now. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to get you to find for me the value of x, please. So I'm going to pause now. Have a try at these questions, please. Alright, so first of all, there's a few methods of solving this. As we discussed, 4 to the power of something, or 4 to the power of x, is equal to 64. Now, what I could do is I could actually do 4 to the power of... We know that 4 to the power of x is the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, we can write 64 as 4 to the power of 3. Now, given the fact I've now got the same base, therefore, x is equal to 3. Now that's fairly straightforward because you can just use trial and error, I guess, if you like. 4 to the power of 3 is equal to 64. That's why we use logarithms. But over this side, it's a little bit trickier. It always becomes that way when we're dealing with negative indices or negative powers. But what I've got is if I was to think about it logically, 2 to the power of negative 3 is equal to x. How do you get that? It's just... It's just like this. 4 to the power of x is equal to 64. 2 to the power of negative 3 is equal to x. Okay? It's just... That's, it's the same way with all of your logarithms. Yes. So, the other thing, that though, is if I was to show you long ways, what's the inverse of a log? An exponential. So, let's do the, let's do the to the power of 2 on both sides. Let's do to the power of 2 on both sides. Oops, to the power of 2, sorry. 2 to the power of negative 3. Guys, shh, shh, too much background noise, please. Two to the, so what, what we're going to see is 2 to the power of log 2 is going to cancel that out. And we're left with on the left-hand side as x is equal to 2 to the power of negative 3. Now, this is what a lot of students do. They say that 2 to the power of negative 3 is negative. No, it's not. I'd like you to think about 2 to the power of negative 3 is the same as 2 to the power of negative 1 
to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of negative 1 expressing that as a positive indice is 1 over 2 to the power of 3 which is the same as a half times a half times a half which is 1 over 8. Those students who think that a negative power is a negative number, you are grossly mistaken. You need to review your work, please. The answer is 1 over 8.